This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Hey, Noah here. In this video, I want to develop a quest system for my open world pixel art game, Chef RPG. The quest system is the feature I saved for last because it essentially weaves every other system in the game together. It would have to integrate things like cooking mini games, restaurant system, hunting and gathering, NPC daily schedules, dialogues, the cutscene system, and more. Due to the number of characters, each having their own quests, combined with main story quests and miscellaneous quests, we could end up having close to 100 quests in the final game. For a small team like ours to create this many quests in a reasonable amount of time, we really need a flexible and modular quest system so that we can make quests quickly. Writing a separate script for each quest would not be a good idea for something like this. To properly design a quest system like this, I want to first look at a case study of a game that I think did this open world quest system very well, and created it in a very modular manner. This game would be RuneScape. I've played RuneScape more than any other game in my life. Part of what is attractive about RuneScape is its simplicity, making it easy to understand and get into. RuneScape gets a lot of flack for its low poly graphics, but the benefit of this simple design and simple graphics is that you can create a lot of content very quickly. The result is a game that you can play for thousands of hours and still not have experienced a large chunk of content. A successful result of this simple design is RuneScape's quest system. The game's simplicity allowed them to create over 150 quests, each with a self-contained story. These quests are not simple fetch quests like we see in a lot of games, but rather a complex combination of story, exploration, puzzles, and combat. Some of these longer quests can take over 5 hours to complete. This can only be done using a highly modular quest system, one that I also want to implement into Chef RPG. Though I'm not going to be adding 5 hour long quests into the game since I don't think that will be enjoyable for most players. Let's look at one of RuneScape's quests and try to break it down to see what a modular quest system would require. One of RuneScape's most famous quests is Demon Slayer. Let's break this quest down into separate segments. The quest is started by talking to one of the NPCs in town, who asks you to protect the town from a powerful demon. So first, we need a segment that uses the dialogue system to initiate quests. She will require you to find a special sword that is needed to slay a demon. You later discover that the special sword is locked away inside a case. To open this case, you'll need to find three keys from different characters in the game world. For example, one of these NPCs has dropped their key in the kitchen drain. You'll need to pour a bucket of water down this drain behind a castle to wash the key down. Then, you'll have to travel beneath the city's sewers to retrieve the key. Here we have a few more segments we need to add. One for speaking to various NPCs, one for requiring you to go to a specific location, another segment that requires you to interact with an object in the game world. Once you have collected the three keys, you have to go to the character that keeps the sword. So here, we will need a segment that takes three of your items and adds one into your inventory. Finally, with the sword in hand, you can go kill the demon. So we need one last segment that requires you to slay a creature. In between all this, there are cutscenes to strengthen the story beats, so we'll also need a segment for cutscenes. Each individual segment is fairly simple, but when you put them together, you get a longer questline with a self-contained story. In a way, this is sort of an elaborate fetch quest, but due to the variety of activities involved, as well as the progression of the story, it feels a lot more engaging than a standard fetch quest. The quest makes you journey across the world and explore many locations that you might not naturally get to which helps give more meaning and function to the different places in the world. There are far too many games that look pretty but lacking meaning and function to a lot of its locations, which makes the locations just a pretty backdrop. In RuneScape, every building can be entered, and even small details like this drain behind this building has a gameplay function. This kind of thing makes a game world feel more alive and lived in, even in the game with simple graphics. Now that we have an idea of what is required for a modular quest system, we can begin to implement one in Chef RPG. The best way to go about building a new quest system is to actually build out a functional quest so that we can really stress test this new system. I'll be using one of the character quests I quickly wrote up. Eventually, I'll have my writer improve the story, but for now, I'm just using it as a test case. For a quick summary of the quest, the character April had her house broken into by a boar. It destroyed her home and more importantly, destroyed her crystal ball that she uses for fortune telling. The player will help her create a new crystal ball. First, the player needs to find a method of extracting a large quartz crystal, which can't be done by your current tools. You will need to speak to a specific NPC to obtain a stronger tool. Next, you'll need to find a skilled sculptor who can shape the crystal into a perfect sphere. Finally, April's crystal ball wasn't just any crystal ball, but it was blessed by the spirits of the forest. 
The spirits of the forest require a food offering in order to bless the ball. So we will need to cook several dishes and bring them into the deep woods, where we would place the crystal ball and food there overnight to be blessed. The crystal ball has been blessed, and you can retrieve it and bring it back to April to complete the quest. So there are a lot of steps here. The first thing we need to do is to create a way to contain all of this quest information so that it's easy to keep track of and easy for scripts to reach the information and determine what to do. I decided to use a scriptable object here, which is essentially an information package that neatly contains all the information I need for the quest. Information we need for each quest includes the quest ID so I can quickly reference or find this package, the NPC that gives this quest, the list of requirements to start the quest, each requirement could be a certain time or day, having a certain friendship level with a character, or having completed a different quest. If all the requirements are met, the quest will be able to start. We will also need a list of quest segments in the quest. Once we have the segments, we'll need a script that goes through all the quest segments one by one to determine what the player needs to do next. And finally, we'll need a list of rewards for each quest. So now that the information packet for the quest is ready, it's easy for the script to find this quest and access all its information. Now, let's start by making a way to actually start the quest. To keep things flexible, I want there to be multiple ways to start a quest. Assuming we've met all the quest requirements, I want some quests to start from entering a scene, which would result in a cutscene plan. Some quests might start by just talking to an NPC, other quests might start by interacting with an object in the world. In games like Stardew Valley, a lot of quests start when you first leave your house in the morning. For every action, such as entering a new scene, talking to an NPC, sleeping, or interacting with a quest object, we will need to check if a quest will be started or if it continues an ongoing quest. This is where I encountered the first design problem. A lot of quests can be active at the same time, and quests usually involve multiple activities and chatting with multiple NPCs. If an NPC has the ability to both start or continue a quest, should we prioritize existing quests first or should we focus on starting new quests? since we can't do both at the same time. After some thinking, I decided it's best to continue existing quests first, since it would feel weird for a player to chat with an NPC that a quest instructed them to, only to get a new quest instead, which would be confusing. If a new quest doesn't immediately activate, it's not a big deal since players weren't expecting anything to happen in the first place. Of course, we can design it so that you can just speak to the NPC one more time to start a new quest. Before jumping ahead, I want to take a minute to talk about this video's sponsor, Squarespace an all-in-one platform for hosting and building websites. They have a ton of great templates that you can choose from, and I recently used Squarespace to create a website for Chef RPG. What surprised me was the amount of customization available, and you can mix and match different templates to create pages suited to your needs. Squarespace lets you insert short videos, so I put one right at the front page, which looks pretty cool. They have a great automated image scaling system, so I never have to worry about if images or videos are cropped incorrectly. Scrolling down, we have a system for collecting emails, which can be linked to Squarespace's emailing system if you ever need to send out important updates. They also have great portfolio tools that automatically adjust layouts, which allowed me to create a screenshots page where you can click and enlarge individual images. It's definitely a useful platform for artists and designers looking to create an online portfolio, or game developers looking to make a website for their game. If you're interested, check out squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash pixelarchitect to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Now back to the video. For this quest, I also want a cutscene to play, which shows that April's room was destroyed by the boar. So we'll need some new art, and a method of changing the visuals of the environment based on your progression in certain quests. We'll just add some trash that's scattered all over the floor, as well as some footprints from the boar. After the quest requirements are met, when we enter the scene, we will be greeted by a new cutscene. After some dialogue, you are given the choice to accept the quest or not. I felt it would be important to include this option, since I think it would be weird if characters forced you to help them. At least for non-main story quests, I think having this option would be good. Of course, if you decline, you can always come back later and accept the quest. This required a bit of extra code, but I think it's worth it for improving the player feel of having the option to accept quests. Now that we can start quests, another important thing we need to add is the ability to track your quests. For longer quests that involve a lot of steps, we'll need a way to update the quest log so you can know exactly what to do next. Going back to RuneScape, their simple solution is to describe what to do next, crossing out your previously completed tasks. So let's update the quest tooltip so that it will automatically update based on your progression. Depending on your progress, the tooltip should now tell you what to do next. 
So we can see here, now that we have completed the quest intro, it tells us we should speak to Bianca about extracting perfect quartz crystals. Now comes the core of the quest system. The many segments that, when put together, make up the whole quest. Let's create a script that describes these segments and tracks what kind of information we need for each. Some obvious segments we need to add are talk to an NPC, collect an item, go to a location, defeat an animal, wait a certain amount of time, or go to sleep. Since this is a cooking game, we should add one for cooking a dish. Later, we can also add quest segments for completing an entire restaurant service or hosting an event. For each segment, there is certain information we should store so that we can customize and edit these quests quickly from the inspector. The purpose of building a modular system is to build quests quickly, so hopefully by the end, we should be able to create a functional, multi-step quest in just a few hours. The next segment requires you to chat with an NPC and purchase a new diamond drill from her. So we'll need to add an option to buy an item. If you're good friends with the character, you should be able to buy it for a lot cheaper. So we should include a friendship check in quest segments so that sometimes we can benefit from higher friendship. We receive a drill which will take us to the underground caves where we can extract a perfect quartz crystal. I have to add a small bit of code here to ensure that weaker drills do not work on this rock and we will need a diamond drill to extract a crystal. In this case, the completion check requires you to have an item in your inventory. So when the crystal is placed in your inventory, the segment updates. If we check the progress tab, it tells us to speak to April again. Next, April will tell us to bring the crystal to an artisan who can polish it. Anna May in town can do this. I thought it would be good to show some animations here, so we can throw another cutscene here where you would see her doing some work on a rock before handing it back. After the cutscene is done, we can check the quest logs again to see that another segment is complete. It now tells us to cook some vegetarian dishes in order to make an offering to the spirits of the forest. We'll need to link the restaurant and cooking minigames to the quests. If we have a quest, it should allow you to choose the quest dish to cook when opening the fridge. I also want the ability to choose a type of dish rather than a specific dish. Let's add a new option here called cook type, which gives us a few options to choose from. For example, we can choose a dish by course. If we select dessert, any dessert dishes will work in this quest segment. Another way to separate dishes can be by appliance, or whether a dish is a meat dish or a vegan dish. In this case, I want the player to cook a vegetable dish, so we'll need to add a new category that separates dishes based on food specialty. Then after completing the dish, we'll link it back to the quest manager so that it can check if a quest segment is completed. We can see here that the cooking segment is complete. Finally, the tooltip tells us to bring the crystal ball and food offerings to the deep woods. Here, I went ahead and created a little altar to place the ball. After interacting with the altar, the visuals should update, which also helps to inform the player that another quest segment is complete. Now, we need to leave it overnight. The best way to do this is to simply check whether the player goes to sleep. When you wake up, it should automatically complete the segment. Since there is no indication for the player, I thought it'd be helpful to add a little chat bubble here when waking up, which will tell you when a quest has been updated. Now, if we return to the forest, we should see that the altar's visuals have been updated. The food should be gone, and maybe the crystal ball will have changed color. I feel that it's important here to have a script that keeps track of all the different visual changes throughout the world. I want your progression and choices in the game to have a visual impact on the game world, so let's introduce a world visual manager that keeps track of everything. In this case, if we have reached a certain point in April's quest, the visuals of the altar will update accordingly. If we come back to the scene the next day, it should still remain the same until we pick up the crystal ball. The altar's visuals should permanently update. We can bring this blessed crystal ball back to April, which will complete the quest, and will receive a reward. I think these quest rewards should be very valuable and unique to give players a greater incentive to complete them. In this case, I also want to add a selection of rewards to choose from to help add to the RPG mechanics. For example, here we can reward one pendant that gives a massive boost to your social skill, and another pendant that gives a massive boost to your gathering skill. This took a bit of extra code and UI work to add these additional buttons, but eventually I got it working. Now we can choose the reward and complete the quest. So that's about it for the modular quest system. Of course, we'll need to add more options to the system later on to accommodate other activities. It should eventually be a flexible and robust system that allows the creation of quests to be very quick and efficient. So I can spend more time designing game content instead of writing more scripts. We have a lot of interesting stories written for the game, so the game should feel a lot more alive once these quests are added in. 
Now, regarding the eventual release of Chef RPG, I was contacted by a lot of publishers over the past year and was very close to signing a contract with some big publishers. But some issues always seem to crop up in the end, mostly regarding their contracts, that in the end, I felt it would be better for me to just release on my own. If we had funding from a publisher, the plan was to go straight for a 1.0 launch with everything I want in the game without doing early access. But as time went on, I began to realize that a lot of the time consuming things I want to add to the game, such as a second city and an extended story, aren't really essential to the main game. From the beginning, I could just have planned a cooking RPG game around just one town instead of two, and it would still work pretty well. The planned Billboard City will be very cool once complete. It's one thing to make all the art, but it would also need a lot of attractions and activities to make it a natural and fun part of the game. Combined with weaving the storyline and character quests into Billboard City, it would take quite a lot of time to complete. We're in a fortunate position that a lot of players are excited and waiting for the game. The game is mostly complete for the first town, and I don't want players to wait forever just so I can satisfy a personal desire to do a 1.0 launch with everything I want. Even with funding from a publisher, I felt that it wouldn't speed up development by very much, so players would need to wait a long time for the final game either way. In the long run, the benefit of having full control over the project is that I can add what I want into the game without needing a ton of approvals from a corporate entity, or worse, being forced into adding unnecessary transactions or DLCs for things that I'd much rather just add for free. Now that we're releasing without the publisher, the new plan is to do an early access with a mostly complete game centered around the first town. Early access will help with funding and getting feedback for what we should focus our attention on. Billboard City, the extended storyline, and some other areas and features will be added to the game during the early access period. We've also received a lot of cool ideas from you guys over the past year, so I think there are plenty of things to add to the game even after the 1.0 launch. We'll likely launch Chef RPG in early access next summer. I'll make a proper announcement and set an exact release date once I have a better idea of the dates of Steam events and release dates of some other games. It'll be a very exciting few months as we prepare the game for release and get it in the hands of players. It'll also be a very tiring period that probably involves 70 hour work weeks, but that's just the reality of game development, I guess. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and seeing how quests are made. Thanks for watching and see you next time.